What up, y'all? And welcome back to another one. Oh, well, starting off the video a little different. We're at the P.O. box. We're at the post office. And boy, am I sick of these masks. Uh, just got back from Texas. And they lifted the entire mask, uh, mask mandate down there. And it's awesome. You don't have to worry about it at all. But we got old Frederick. Say hi, Frederick. Come here. Come here, dude. Come here, Frederick. Come on. Come here, big dog. Oh, he's like, Dad, I don't want to get up there. You always tell me not to. Today, uh, we're headed. Uh, I'm taking you guys with me. First off, we got some packages. Oh, yeah. Y'all know, I got a P.O. box. It's always, every single video is linked down in the description below. Um, we're going to open all your guys' packages at the end of the video here, towards the end of it. But I'm taking y'all with me today. Uh, just got back from Mexico. Yeah, big trip. Uh, first time deep sea fishing and it was amazing had such a good time the video is going to be unreal with old p diddy he went and his drone footage is absolutely going to be insane incredible and i mean it y'all have to stay tuned for that video it should go up pretty soon or it already has but anyways we're going to do some scouting right now it is what Mar march 8th there's still some snow geese lingering around. All my boys, I was like, hey, is there any birds around? They're like, yeah, not many, but they're still huntable somewhat. So I'm gonna try to squeeze uh, some snow goose vids out here. Really wanna get to hunting and I wanna get a crow hunt before it closes in a few days. But today's video is gonna be centered around uh, this past season, uh, the guide season. And just like my feelings and thoughts all about it that I have not talk to y'all about there's just stuff that i don't talk about especially when i'm in uh in the grind in the you know in go mode i don't want to uh, ever be negative and uh there's just things that i don't share you know my personal feelings the ups and downs uh what types of ups and downs can occur so we're gonna do some scouting here probably won't be too much and then we're gonna get back home and go over all that jazz so well uh it is right at noon and i'm just scouting water roost that's about it uh it's easy to scout roost instead of trying to ch find a little amount of birds in a big area so i figured what the heck i needed to look at the old farm pond and i need to pick up my generator yeah it's been sitting here the whole time <laughs> i almost forgot about it, to be completely honest and what else I forgot about? To bring my waders. I'm gonna have to pull up the old jeans and uh, take off the shoes. Cause I gotta get my ice eater back. It flopped over. Uh, this really froze over. I was hoping and worried that it was gonna mess my ice eater up because of, I'm guaranteeing the ice probably got two to three inches thick. So I gotta take off the old shoes, roll up them jeans and retrieve my ice eater. <laughs> oh boy. Oh. Well, wasn't planning on doing this today. It is cold too. It's only like 50 degrees today. This is gonna feel awesome. That's <laughs> cold. Oh, come on. Oh, there we go. Ooh, that cold. That's real cold. Well, <laughs> we are at the next spot. Um, been checking water, me and old Frederick. Uh, I have found a total um, of a, I've seen a probably two to 300 snows. And that's it. Now, mind you, like I said, it's March 8th today. And historically, by this time, my area is really, really, really unloaded. Uh, today, it's going to get up to 70, agree, 70 degrees for about the, I don't know, probably 10th, 12th day in a row. But we're at my lease field, and, and this is part of guiding that I wanted to talk about right away. It's really windy out, so I'm going to only get out there when I have to. But this is my lease field. I'll show you it in one second. Uh, one thing about guiding, you have to lease ground and you have to use your best judgment on what's 
what's good to lease and what isn't. You know, what are you going to waste my money on? What What's going to really provide for me? And every season it changes. So the only thing you can do is go off your, you know, the, the last three seasons and be like, okay, birds have really liked this flight line or these fields or this farmer's land. And you just use your best judgment. My lease field. You all know that this is my, a lot of my old timers here that have been here for a while. This lease field uh, was the first property that I ever leased and that was what three years ago um, Haven't hunted it one time uh, So yes, I paid for it again this year. I can buddy hunt I can guide on it whatever, but it never produced a hunt never we scouted it You know every week almost every day and it never provided a hunt still today all season long So it cost me some money it cost me some money and and that always kind of hurts but it's part of the game you got to play the game and uh just like this one i'll be honest it cost me roughly under a thousand bucks let's say that for first rights you know just to have first rights full first rights to it and that money i'm in the hole uh for example there's another farmer that i leased all of his stuff from for a thousand dollars every bit of it right so that gave me first rights to all of his stuff. No one else can hunt it, it's just me, blah, blah, blah. There's probably, what, six to eight fields total? Always provides hunt, hunts every single year. Haven't hunted it one time still. So I wanted to get that out and let you guys know that it is expensive. Guiding is expensive, first of all. Come on, buddy, let's go. It's expensive. Sometimes you spend money that does not pay off. Sometimes um, you gotta hold on to ground. Just like my lease field right here, I'm gonna hold on to it. I think in the past two years, I've only hunted it probably three times, to be honest with you. But I'm not gonna let it go. It's gorgeous. I love this lease field. Check out the hide right here. I know we'll hurry up because of the wind, but this type of ditch, goes around the entire thing. You can A-frame, you can lay out blind, you can go in full white in the middle of it for ducks, snows, but not this year. Like I said, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, and this year I lost on probably, oh, I, I would say three to four leases. I only hunted once or twice or zero times. You go potty, Frederick? You go potty? Come on, load them up. Good boy. <laughs> well, what I thought was 200 snow geese is 200 seagulls. Old Steven Seagulls. Yeah, Frederick. Thank goodness we looked at them through the old glass. They gone. They gone, boys. Uh, we're going to head back to the lodge so I can go over some other stuff. There's a lot to cover on this video as far as guiding goes. Um, but stay tuned. We're going to be headed to uh, back up to South Dakota for an awesome three-day snow goose hunt. Permanent sets, huge 5,000 full body sets, 3,000 floater sets. It's going to be awesome. That'll be the beginning of April. So we're going to be goose hunting in April. It's going to be odd. Old Fred, just love and life. Well, this will be the last body of water that I'm going to check before we just head home. This is uh, one of the ponds that we guided on. What we, we hunted it twice. Two times, ducks and geese. I think both hunt was really good. Uh, we ended up shooting all the species, literally. Specks, lesser, snows, ducks off this pond a couple times. Awesome hunt. Ooh, get some mallards getting up. There we are. Mallards got right off the, oop, there they go. The ducks love this pond so much. Here we are, no snow geese. Hawk out of nowhere. Comorants, 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 com comorants. That's how you pronounce it. My goodness, look how much this has went down. The first time we hunted it, back in, I believe, what, November? The water line was right here. The second time we hunted it, the water line was right here. Now look, way down. And we got, ooh, we got a lot of dead fish. Ooh, one, two. Oh my God. What in the world? 
Wow, what happened here? Look at this. These are all dead. Look at this, thousands. Thousands. Whoa. Well, I decided I'm gonna go ahead and do a video over the old pond with all the dead fish. But we're back here at the lodge. I haven't been here for a while. Come on, Fred. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Ooh, it's dark in here. Turn on some lights, Bob. Oh, boy, what is that? <laughs> Wasn't expecting that. Ducks package, what can be in there? Well, here we are. I had to turn on the big light because it's pretty dark in here. Hope y'all can see me well. The old ducks dealio. Oh, what can it be? We have a mystery bag, but I don't think this is it. Nope. This is, oh yeah. Look at that beauty. The t-shirt of the month, the March t-shirt of the month. That old collared snow goose. How sweet is that? Snow goose season is not over, y'all. I am actually headed out tomorrow. Got a hunt planned with some buddies that I haven't hunted with all season long. Got a few things here. This is the mail that we got. Uh, but before that, a couple things. I wrote down some keynotes um, just so I wouldn't forget. I wanted to go over. I really want to go in depth on this. I'm kind of wearing my heart on my sleeve when it comes to my explanation of did I enjoy my first season guiding. And I want to wrap it all up. And uh, because this is the main reason is I've had a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of young guys, old guys, doesn't matter, but a lot of young guys that are 20, 19 years old and you're making some big decisions in your life. And, and one of them is, do I go to college or do I do something I love, which don't get me wrong, we all want to end up doing something we love, right? Uh, but I get a lot of questions that are heavy and it's, hey Bob, I've seen your success over the over the last four to five years and now your first season of guiding just want to let you know it's going to go awesome yada 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 do you have room for another guide or helper i'll work for free blah 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 i just want to get my foot in the door i want to do something i love and i don't know if i want to go to college i'm going to tell you all first off before i get into one two three four five about six things here one thing in particular guys you have to chase the money a little bit in your life we can all do something we love but on the same token we all have to survive well if you're young enough and you um and, and you don't think college is for you absolutely do your best to first off get your foot in the door second of all prove yourself day in day out be on time every day if you slip up you're not gonna the outfitter or outfitters, you're just gonna get a bad name if you're just too young and you don't show up. And what I mean by show up isn't being on time every day only, but it's providing uh, for not only the hunts, but the clients, yada, yada. You, It's 100% or nothing. I have to stress that to y'all. Uh, number two, the wage. Guys, if you are looking for a high, high-end wage and you're just getting into this, you're probably not gonna get paid a lot. It's one of them things where you have to get your foot in the door, get in a big outfitter that can pay you good, and you have to be able to provide a good service, no matter the age. So that being said, before I go into, uh, I wanted to hit that because, guys, I, I do not want to make those huge decisions for you all. Um, when, when people ask me those questions, Bobby, what should I do? I'm not gonna, I can't compare my success to yours, vice versa. I have this YouTube channel that got really big, so it gives me a lot of opportunity, you know? So, oh, that's sweet, look at that. Look at that picture, old Bob spraying and praying, dude. It says, dear Bobby, I enjoy watching your videos from Grant. <laughs> Thanks, Grant. So one of the big things, guys, is <clears throat> management, management. Um, this being here on my property, I have a lot of people here all the time. And not only that, but I have employees, uh, managing, um, everybody here who's helping, who's getting paid, who isn't getting paid. Like we can't have a lot of visitors all the time that just come over and, and eat dinner with the clients. It really gets expensive providing these meals every night. So management in a three in 360 degrees. Uh, everything from making sure the employees are paid, making sure 
the every, when I say employees, I'm talking about Joe, Gerald, Drew, Preston, Gage, anybody else who might be helping or helping next year. Um, just making sure everybody's, you know, scouting where they need to that evening. And then in the morning, making sure we have a plan in place for the next morning, right? So management, as far as the hunts go, and then management of the clients, booking them. Everything from booking them, logging it correctly, taking their 50% deposit, and then when they show up, everything's in place for their group. Especially when you have, I think this uh, season, I ran 156, 156 clients, which I booked, what, probably 85, 90% of them myself. And it was my first year. So I think going back to the, the question, is this for me? Is this for you? Look guys, if you've always wanted to work for yourself and do something you love, try it. But I would get my foot in the door and learn the ropes a little bit before you go doing it yourself. I have seen, um, adding to that, I have seen a lot of young guys open outfitters by themselves. Now, I'm not saying that you can't provide the hunts. What I'm saying is are you gonna book those 40 year old clients that have money? Are you gonna book those 55 year old clients that have money, 35, 30 years old, the ones that are older than you? I'm not saying you can't do it. All I'm saying if, is if they don't know you and they've never hunted with you, it's, I've seen it in the past and it repeats itself. If you're young, it's really hard to, to get the trust right off the bat. And it's just because of appearance and judgment and age and uh, relying on myself as a client to get my money's worth, right? Because a lot of, I hate to say this, but a lot of clients have had really bad experiences going with young guides. I'm just saying nothing. I'm not harping on you young ones, but what I am saying is if you're going to do it, don't make a fool out of yourself. Um, so number three, this is going to lead up into the, probably the biggest things that I have to deal with. And that's just everyday stress. Um, providing hunts every single day. I think in November we ran 18 days straight and then December we ran 22 days straight and then January we ran like 15 days straight. But there was breaks and little spurts here and there, you know what I mean? The stress of providing a hunt the next day can be really bad. And not all the time are we loaded and we have so many birds I don't know what to do with. Uh, sometimes it's that case. But I would say, you know, 50% of the time at least you're going, whew, boys, got anything? You got anything? While you're on the road that night. Uh, and there's a lot of days where, you know, Drew or Joe, whoever wasn't hunting that day, myself, uh, I already got a field locked down for the next day, the morning that we're hunting. So that's stressful. Uh, when you have a full group of eight or 10 or 12 in here and they're expecting a hunt now, a lot of my clients, I'm so thankful, a lot of them, you know, on some of the slower hunts where you'd only shoot 10 or 12 or six or 14 or, you know, they were very respectful in the sense like, hey, yesterday was a banger, it's okay, they're slow days. I had Federal, Federal Ammo, who I'm affiliated with, blah, 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 had them down, this is their second year in a row, and their first morning, it was a big field hunt out of a tree row, zero. Birds didn't even come to the field. They went all somewhere else. It was cloudy, a weather system was rolling in and they just wanted to stay close to the roost and they didn't come out that far. We did scramble and put together, they shot like 20 ducks that evening, but it's that doesn't happen all the time. Sometimes you don't rebound, you know what I mean? So it is stressful providing hunts every day. Our fly line is great, my area is great, but that can be bad. Uh, getting, let's go ahead and open this bad boy right here. This is from David Ray from St. Paul, Minnesota. If you guys want to send something, it's always linked down in the description. P.O. Box. Do it. I love getting stuff for the lodge. Oh, look at that. Look at this. Oh, David. So I've been talking about getting ammo bags for ducks. This is an exclusive behind the scenes deal here. Ammo bags. Yeah, yeah. Might happen. That looks pretty good for canvas. Well, that's a sneak peek of something that might come. Didn't know that's what that was. <laughs> uh, number four, 
The successes. So I'm not, let's get out of the Debbie Downer mode, right? Let, let's, let's put that to the side and let's talk about what keeps us going because I got two more, wait, yeah, two more things after this one. And I want to say right here in the middle of the road, y'all, it's so rewarding. Even on some of, some of our worst groups, as far as hunt outcomes, like, man, your three days wasn't what we wanted it to be. You, you still shot decent numbers. I wish we could have done better. Even on those groups, they're so gracious to be here. Everybody that booked a hunt from YouTube, all you guys that came to my lodge, that met my family, that met all of my guides and my friends and my dogs, everything. After the three days, all of you guys were like, Bob, it's honestly better than I expected. And that, thank you. I was so worried. I was so worried. You guys have no idea. I had no idea the people that were coming. That was pretty stressful in itself. You never know. People can be bad or good. 98% of everybody were awesome, if that tells you anything. So, uh, that's awesome. That, that's what keeps me going, uh, that, the successes and the enjoyment of y'all that book coming here. Now, speaking of that, books are opening like any day. Any day, follow the Instagram, my Instagram and Sand Hill Flyway. I will be announcing it. I will do a lot of booking on Instagram. It's, a, it's just a lot easier. So hit me up on Instagram, start following it. Don't hit me up yet, start following it. And when I post, hey, we are booking now, that's when you hit me up. That's the easiest way to do it, y'all. Uh, we do have a Sand Hill Flyway at Gmail if you want to email about an inquiry. Uh, my wife runs that. So. The last one here, and this is, I, I, I put it on the end of it because better, I saved it for last because it's the most important that affects me. It's the biggest thing that affects me. Um, I'm a dad and I'm a husband. I'm a daddy to two and a husband to one. And the, already the time that it took away from my family, having the YouTube channel alone, uploading every other day, has been a lot you know some of those weeks uh i'm traveling you know let's say august september october i'm still traveling a little bit here and there maybe twice a month maybe only once it's not easy that wasn't easy already me devoting all my time to this youtube channel i'm sure some of you have an idea of what it takes and how much time it takes just to run the youtube channel well add in a lodge you know and um it be it, be, it goes from already here to here now again i'm doing something i love and i have a wife that tenfold supports me day and day and day time and time again and i'd never have to question that so that being said she knows when i'm busy i'm busy but then when i get my breaks it's on me to go back turn off the phone put it down which i've been doing more and play with my family spend time with my family but during guide season, man, those things are very rare. Uh, this, this year I knew it was going to be a lot, but it was. It was a bunch. It becomes stressful on my marriage. Um, when mama just needs a break, you know, and she needs uh, three hours to go do something that she wants to do by herself and just enjoy some alone time. I'm not there to do that all the time and keep the kids, you know, because you hunt, you get up at 4 a.m., you hunt, you're back by, let's say, noon and you're dog tired an hour nap is great you know and sometimes it turns into an hour and a half but then you have to scout that evening there's not a lot of time uh available during guide season but now this is my off season we're going to be doing a lot of fishing like we already have turkey hunting oh yeah just gave away the turkey hunt over at the podcast that's a, as well as the podcast i added that <laughs> i got a lot going on <sighs> Hopefully I don't lose my mind one of these days, you know? Woo! Well, that was long. Like I said, if you guys want to send anything to the lodge, P.O. box down in the description. I hope I covered everything as thoroughly. Like those are the most important things uh, that I wanted, that y'all have asked about for one. And those are the most important things that affect me on the daily basis. If you guys have any video recommendations right now, anything you want me to cover, do. I know a lot of you guys want the gun videos, the gun safety videos. I know, I know, I know, I know. I want to do them too. 
but YouTube hates them. And if I start doing those again, like putting the gun in the vise, they'll demonetize me again. I already went through it and I know that I can't do it. So I'm trying to figure out something else to do involving um, basically those video ideas, if you know what I'm saying. I'm actually still waiting on an update for old Frederick. Yep, the K-State University has not got back with me yet. Still waiting to be informed on his possible hip surgery. When I find out something, I'll let y'all know. But again, please let me know what y'all wanna see down in the comments. Thank you all for being here. Subscribe if you haven't, but we'll see you on the next one.